one thing to also consider is Mars and Venus as well when it comes to like finding your life path as well. It's like your Mars, kind of like your your energy, your your motivation. Like where is it going to be? Um, as well as your your Venus, like what do you love doing? So that's also highly important to take into account. So. Again, we are going to be talking about our favorite topic, and that is astrology. We're here again with Nick Tamaroto, and I know we've been, you know, doing the magic series, but we are shifting years just to, uh, you know, make it interesting and, and whatnot. So today we are going to be talking about uh, life purpose and how you can uh, find that in your chart. So. Um, we have decided that we're going to go ahead and share about our own life purpose, our each individual life purpose here, um, and share our own chart. So we will get right to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, when it comes to life purpose, that's usually a question that most people are going to be asking a lot. Like, what's what's the purpose of life? Why am I here? This and that, and even. Even without astrology, we're constantly told, like, wait, what do you want to do when you grow up, right? So, obviously, there's so many things that you could possibly do, and each individual has their own constitution, their own, own dispositions to what they want to do. You know, and, and sometimes, it, you know, like, may not even be a matter of want. It's just what you might even be capable of. Some people want to do this, but they really need to be doing that or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when people start getting into astrology, they'll start saying, oh my God, so many answers here. And absolutely true. And you can derive practically everything from your natal chart. You just, the only trick is knowing how to do it. So what we're doing here is, you know, that's, we're going to be, yeah, like Crystal said, we're going to be taking apart natal charts and seeing how exactly do we derive from that? Because everyone's chart is going to be different, right? Like it's, it's there's always gonna be these nuances that's gonna mean different things for different people. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So um yeah, uh I will bring up my chart to start. And we'll go from there. And even and it's and like I always said before, like and I've said it multiple times now, mysticism should be oh should be the first um, thing you should learn, learn before you start getting into occultism. And yeah, knowing astrology is one of the most basic things. And especially if you're going to be implementing magic in your life, knowing how the stars have uh, set you up and knowing how to use magic in conjunction can take you leaps and bounds forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Definitely. That is like one of the... Like I think the most helpful thing that I ever got out of astrology thus far is like just it's confirming like all the things that I knew in my heart that I'm here to do and then it like pushed me to like step out of that comfort zone because that can be part of it too is like for instance um your comfort zone is that south node mine's in Aquarius and you want to like move towards your north node with your life purpose and mine's in leo and so that's like being in the spotlight being on or what did i say the north node the yeah side. yeah the north node is in leo um it's being in the spotlight and being on stage and you know that's for me that's been like kind of like stepping out of my comfort zone even just doing these like uh podcasts i guess you could call them um is kind of nerve-wracking nerve-wracking even still for me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah and I, yeah i know you just said it but right 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 there um uh yeah having the north Zone of leo doing these shows whether it's podcasts from before or even the, these shows right now and also bringing in 
your comfort zone from there yourself and from Aquarius. I mean, given the nature of the things we're talking about, so whether it's astrology, whether it's magic, whether it's these, well, whether you want to call them new or maybe very ancient, but for simply forgotten healing uh, modalities with electromagnetism, that's what you're bringing in, in from your south node and then putting it forward into the spotlight right right here on on these social media platforms. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And then like it being like right on that cusp of the sixth house, that's Virgo's house. That's the hermit. Mm -hmm. so I'm way much more comfortable just like, you know, hermitizing and not putting myself out there but knowing astrology i you know if i want to have expansion and growth i, I must move into that leo energy mm. yeah. oh yeah. yeah so i yeah so a couple a couple of things i also want to bring bring up too just so like so the audience knows what we're going to be talking about um so when it comes to like figuring out life path, as we were just talking about the North Node, so we're we're going to talk about the North Node. So like Crystal said, this is going to be that's your pretty much your your destination, and in a sense, like that's where you're you're essentially meant to go to. We're also going to be talking about uh, things like the vertex, um, mm -hmm. your midheaven, as well as as uh, talking about how even the combination of both the signs that they're in, the houses that they're in. As well as the aspects that, that also come into play uh, that will help you determine you know the more specifics because you know yeah people can have similar placements but could have maybe not necessarily radically but they can still have different purposes or paths in life yeah they're going to be similar things that you can that can still make sense in a chart but but still it's like finding these specifics for an individual is pretty much the the goal of of you know this episode Mm -hmm. yeah yes yeah, so that's kind of you know simply covers the south node and the north node in my chart um another thing it being in the 12th house that that's one thing that i have kind of struggled with because leo is like the spotlight but then the 12th house is like hidden right it's like like behind the scenes so <laughs> But it's also that spirituality, and that's kind of what I feel um, drawn to, is like bringing the spirituality out into the spotlight, my own spirituality. Yeah. Yeah, so, so for, for one of the things I've seen, um, when it comes to the sign of the North Node, you know, that's kind of like the, what it, this is just kind of generalized because sometimes these these things when when you're looking at this it's kind of like they seem a little bit interchangeable but the um the sign that the that the north node is in i found is usually kind of like how are you doing something or like the or like what it is you're doing the house is like the oh no hang on sorry i messed that up so the sign is kind of like the theme yeah, the house is the environment. Yeah, the house is like, how are you doing it? And the and the and then you um, couple that with the midheaven is kind of like the theme, like or like sorry, that like where or where are you doing it? So say if we look at the midheaven, here is um, in Taurus. So yeah, in Taurus. So midheaven in Taurus. Um, so that's what that's all pretty much be your career. Mm -hmm. uh, Taurus can also be, yeah, Taurus would be like art. Um, so, like, you know, you have music, you have, um, Taurus would also be, you know, things with like on the physical level too. So you have a, a crafting jewelry, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then Venus is up there too. Yeah. Which, you know, that's Taurus's ruling planet. So that also is the, you know, the music and the jewelry. And I've known, even as a little girl, that music is going to play a huge part in my life. Like, I've just always known that. Mm -hmm. And then she's got Mercury there in the kind of hand. Mm -hmm. The super well articulated hands, stepping beautiful Venetian jewelry and playing beautiful high speed well articulated piano oh yes 
Yeah, yeah. and oh, go ahead. Oh, oh, I was going to refer back and then give you. So with that in mind, now suddenly rewind back to the north node and just and keep the, and re, and remember what we talked about. So twelfth house. So while there is there's difficulties in the twelfth house, yes, there's but it's also connected to yeah the spirituality, the the mysticism, the the occult, the hidden things in life, mm-hmm. life, and then bringing them out into the spotlight and back to the shows, and then reconnect back to the no, to the south node and what she's bringing into the spotlight. Mm. Right. Yep, like the health, because it's you know both Aquarius and the sixth house are, you know, kind of those, you know, alternative medicines, I would say. And then um, bringing it out to share with humanity as like an act of service. Oh, yeah. Another thing to also look at, I think at least when you have it set up here, it's not showing right off the bat. But even another thing to keep to keep an eye out for is the aspects of the North Node as well. Oh yeah, that will also play a part. Maybe I'll put those on. I know I normally don't look at those, but yeah, that's very important mm-hmm. to consider. So yeah, by the way, we use astro.com, and you can put the South Node, also known as the Descending Node, on. You'll have to click that on, otherwise it won't show up. And then aspects are down. Let's see where are the aspects to all planets right here under aspects you just put to all objects or you can do to the lunar node node. i think that will show to both nodes yeah and eclipses huh yeah our internet's kind of slow right now Three centuries later. Yes, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mexico okay. Hey. Oh, there was something I wanted to bring up too. But uh, no. There we no, go. No, something else. Okay. Slowly loading. <laughs> okay. There we go. Ooh, that's pretty. Oh, so I have a kite. Interesting. No. Oh. Honestly, I don't know if I've ever like looked at this not really. with the aspects, like not like in depth. It gives you a grand air trine. Right. And I am, if you look at the elements, you can bring that up, like what your strongest element is. And my strongest element is air. Second is earth. Third is water and fourth is fire in my case. But yeah, so we've got a sextile from the North Node to Saturn, almost exact, one degree away. So I like I all this is second house stellium I have here with the moon, Jupiter, Saturn, and in whole sign even Pluto. Um, second house is Taurus's house that can represent like the, the music aspects as well. And Saturn is like rhythm. And I feel like I have a very like steady rhythm, like yeah, and, and she's got uh Jupiter conjunct Saturn in uh Libra, the arts sign in the second house, the uh Taurus's Venetian arts house. So uh Jupiter's teaching. And Saturn is uh, can be music. Yeah, the, ri- the, the rhythm. I mean, the rhythm. It's like one of the music gods. Mm-hmm. And yeah, she taught music. And I, that's what I went to school with was uh, music education and piano performance. That's what I have mm. to do. Yeah. <laughs> so. and, and Jupiter in the second, uh, even with or without conjunction to Saturn, can mean teaching finance and you've been doing that lately too. I have been, yeah. Yeah, particularly crypto. My, oh yeah. Yeah. And my Jupiter is in Virgo and I teach health mostly. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And then also we have a sextile to Venus, 
which again brings in that Venetian energy once again to my North Node. Um, and then both the Venus and Saturn and Jupiter are trying the South Node. So whenever, like, just to get into a little bit of like the technical uh, part around aspects in the North Node and South Node, um, whenever North Node is sextile a planet, the South Node will be trying the planet. Mm -hmm. I believe. 60 degrees plus 120. Yeah. Uh, pretty cool 180, because 180 is in opposition, and the nodes are always opposite. Mm. 180. So yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. Four. Wow, what a little... Well, that's fun that, you put, that we put these on. Four degree north node straight over to four degree Venus. So it shows that her North Node has to do with Venetian musical arts and her fingers. Venus <laughs> is in her fingers. <laughs> Weaving jewelry and playing piano. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but... That pretty much pretty much sums up my purpose. You know, pretty, pretty simply. <laughs> and, oh, yeah. And then and then uh Venus is exactly trying the south node too. Right. Well, yeah, because it's, like, it's the same. Always yeah. south node's always going to be the same degree and minute as the north node. Four thirty three. Right. Yeah. 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 So, and then as far as the vertex goes, I've never really considered that in life purpose. What what would that be is, your that... interpretation? Well, fifth house. That's like the creative house. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, the vertex was supposed to be like the the, the second ascendant, right? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, so it'll be kind of be it. Like, a moment, I can find my words. <laughs> it, so yeah, the, the vertex can be considered like your second ascendant. Oftentimes, it can be a little bit hidden, right? It can be easily be glossed over, but keep keeping an eye on that because a lot of the times when we when we when we look at, the, at most things in the chart, it's sometimes not always strictly like one point it's usually like a combination of things all at once right where here we, we just as we just saw it's we looked at the north node we looked at the aspects we combine those things with the signs that they're in how they, these things are aspecting vertex is, is much the way the same so right there on vertex we see it on capricorn in the fifth house so what we so what do you know about capricorn so it's a so it's an earth sign. It's mute, it's a cardinal, not mutable. I made that mistake once. I don't know how I mixed that up. <laughs> um, so it's a card cardinal earth sign mm -hmm. at the 29th degree. So what could be what could it be playing with? Well, I've always been like an entrepreneur, like a business builder, and that's Capricorn. And yep. and it's in the fifth house, and she and she wants to be a a leader for her children yeah and she did her she did homeschooling her own school which is leading uh -huh. and, and look how close the vertex is to aquarius the new age of mm. non-indoctrination yeah yeah that was a that's a huge thing i don't want my children indoctr indoctrinated into like your traditional education system yeah and it's also and it also it's going to be uh I think it will be, yeah, be playing with your sun placement and even your midheaven placement right there in Taurus. All right, trying pretty, I mean, within 10 degrees. It is. Yeah, not yeah. even. No, they're both right on the last deacon of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's neat. Mm -hmm. She's actually yeah. got a lot of trines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So, I, I, I have. I've had a pretty easy going life. I mean, obviously there's always challenges and I've had dark night of the soul and all those moments, but overall I can say it's been, it's been pretty easy going. Yeah. And uh, trine is the Sagittarian Jupiterian energy applied to the situation of the two planets. The trine is, mm -hmm. and both of her parents were Sagittarius. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. another thing that i don't think we had on our list and it's 
fairly rare. I don't see it too often, but it's the, the aspect of the yod, which also has to do with life purpose. Um, those that have a yod, and I'll just show it real quick. It's this uh, in conjunct, this dashed green line, and then the second dashed green line, and then the two planets sextiling here. So it's Neptune and Pluto moon sextiling, and then in conjunct the sun, both of them, all three of them. Yeah. But the in conjunct can represent like that feeling of knowing you're here to accomplish something like your your purpose like I just thought that that was like something that everybody had like that desire that that will to like do something with their life but I don't I, I don't know if everyone really does like because some people just like are like eh, whatever you know I just go along with the the sheep <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. yeah it's a universal thing too for people to know what they were going to do early on mm -hmm. and she knew music she was playing piano and sitting at the piano back at day four age four kind of just sitting there like all right when do i start <laughs> from, what I get, from what i get from what she says yeah um and uh hers is easy it's pointing up here to a career in music you know, sun's conjunct Venus. The sun has a huge orb. I know it's not a sign, but it's still conjunct Venus, and it's in Taurus. Um, in the bottom of the odd here is uh, Neptune, which is music, and hers is in Sag, which means music at the church. And yeah, I used to play music at oh. the a very young age. Like, I was always doing, like, that special music time. Mm. Yeah, playing the piano. Yeah. yeah, and the other one here, the other base of this yod, it's also called the finger of God, um, is on is to the moon, and the moon is in arts, uh, you know, beauty, arts, sign, even a music sign. I've seen many Libra musicians. And this 19 degrees here happens to be on a Taurus section. <laughs> Dodecatomoria, which means 12 signs within a sign. So within this sign, there's 12 signs. And the order it goes is, because it's Libra, the first two and a half degrees are devoted to Libra. The, sec the second two and a half degrees are devoted to the next sign, Scorpio. Scorpio. And it goes along in these 12 two and a half degree segments it's a division of the sine wave within the sign and 19 happens to land right in the center of the taurus so again another theme play on taurus and the moon loves taurus and the moon is in the second house taurus's house a venus house and in libra a venus sign and then the taurus dodecaman Dodeca Tamora is also Venetian. So, yeah. It's, yeah. And then also, like, yeah, playing music in church, but also like a spiritual aspect to music because I'm like here to share, not just like cover, you know, playing other people's music. Like, I did do like classical training and play all the classical, romantic, all that stuff throughout, um, you know, my young years into college but then i hit a point where i started like tuning in to source and creating my own music and it's like a spiritual thing for me i'm just getting truth bumps right now thinking about it <laughs> yeah so we've done for a while uh sound bowl singing bowl sessions and mm -hmm. flute healing healing, and, healing. and some vocals you know, we've done that for a while, so she's already not, not even that you want to do it. She's done it, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, and I guess like Neptune said over to here, the moon could be like you play with an emotional and Plutonian powerful mm -hmm. feel mm -hmm. as you do, uh, and then it goes right up to here perfectly to the sun exactly tied to the MC, which is the glorious career in music. Yeah. yeah. Oh. One thing, oh, go ahead. 
I was going to say nothing I wanted to add in as well. Even Chiron, that can also play a, a huge role as well. That's what I was going to say. I'm glad too. you mentioned that. Yeah. I wanted to mention that since the beginning, but I was just waiting because yeah, they're, yeah. their turn. Yeah. Yeah. So in relation to Chiron, in my experience, it being in Taurus, like I've always loved to sing. Like I know that I have this voice within me, but at the same time, I have this like my throat chakra is like, it's gotten a lot, lot better, but like I have this, I've had this tight throat and like this, um, no confidence in my voice, just thinking it didn't sound right. And that's that mm. Chiron in my throat. Yeah, that would be Chiron, Mars. Yeah, that too, Mars. And the fact that uh, the sun, it, it has an opposition to a retrograding malefic and a malefic sign. And the opposition is tension. So, but it's mostly, I would say it's mostly the Chiron. So mm -hmm. you're definitely right. And then I would say secondarily, Mars would probably add some. Mm -hmm. But I think that could, even though it's in like, it's um, sign of detriment in Taurus, Mars is, I still feel that that can give, gives me that drive. Because if I didn't, perhaps if I didn't have that there, I would just have given up on singing altogether. I wouldn't have that passion be behind wanting to sing, perhaps. Um. Yeah. Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson have Mars and Taurus. Mm. They may have it in the second house, one of them. But okay. yeah, and there's another musician I found too. Uh, and second house being the Taurus house is also the throat. And you have a ton of energy. Your whole life is devoted to the throat, neck, energy. Uh, Saturn retrograde in the throat to it add mm -hmm. tension. Mm -hmm. And then Jupiter and uh, Moon could just add a lot of energy to your throat. And then Pluto, it's not really in there. It's close, but that would add to it too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Oh, and another thing, and then we can move on from my chart. Um, Saturn is also mastery. It can be a restriction, but it can also like create a mastery wherever it's placed. And um, I've put in my 10,000 hours plus in playing the piano. So I, I, I can say I'm probably a master at that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. And even in magic, uh, I, may, I think I may have mentioned this at some point, but when using the, the powers of Saturn, it's, yeah, well, Saturn can, it can be used to restrict because when it's used to banish, it can also be used to break restrictions. Saturn, yeah, so Saturn is oftentimes just, is a is a teacher it just teaches a different way whereas jupiter gives it to you right off the bat saturn wants to earn it so once you pass saturn's exams and he wants you to pass you know saturn's oftentimes depicted as the as a villain i mean he is the villain he is the opposer but he's a, he doesn't do that just to be an asshole to you he's doing that because he wants you to prove that you can do it so the sun will go hey i'm gonna do this i can do this saturn's as no you can't and i was like yes i can he's like oh yeah prove it and if you do it he rewards you oftentimes his rewards can actually be greater than that of jupiter right. yeah yeah nicely and, put yeah yeah it was beautiful and it has to do with time too because saturn is a god of time the so it in the takes time. time to master something mm -hmm. and it's trying my my venus so another venetian thing there Whoa. oops yeah so friday born on a friday Freya, the goddess of Venus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> look at that. Uh, that's another thing to consider. Uh, yeah, the day of the week, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And just today, <laughs> just this morning, we were talking about this, and we didn't really, like, think. I hadn't thought into this at all, but being that um, NC is the strongest, second strongest point after the AC, because one plus zero equals one. Yeah, the tenth the house. Tenth house, one plus zero. Virtually one. Being that my son is right on the MC, that brings a Leo energy. So again, that's tying to that Leo North Node. I need to like step out into that, you know, that limelight. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. As the sun's like 
directly reflecting on I my mean, face. Yeah, but... if you're born with the sun exactly <laughs> on zenith, sun is your power planet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, so I guess yeah, for the audience, I'm, we're moving on to different charts. I, 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 at least I think we are. But um, but yeah, like it. While well, it may seem complicated at first, like, much like with anything in the charts, kind of like take it one step at a time. So start with the north node, see how where that's the place at first, see what that what that plays with, and then start combining it with okay, we had got the north node. It's a, it's in this sign, it's in that house. Then maybe you start looking at the MC. Look at that. What what's playing with that? Where is that placed? Right, what sign is in this is it playing with any planets does it have anything in the 10th house and then from there yeah you start looking at all right so let's take a look at everything that's that these important points are playing of course you can also start including things like the vertex and the south node too but you know if, if you want to keep things simple and just work from there start with those two mm -hmm. see what those are playing with and work from every way from there yeah yeah the vertex i don't remember exactly if we elaborated specifically on it but it's a mathematical calculation. It's from the old books. I thought it was a new thing for a while, but from the old books. It's uh, the second, it's considered, can be considered the second ascendant. Uh, and it has to do with the point of destiny. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is how you look. I remember I took a glance at somebody and I said, Scorpio vertex. <laughs> whole chart, whole chart. I seen it, I seen it. And I pulled it up and it was Scorpio Vertex. And it's calculated. I mean, obviously online, you don't have to do the calculations anymore, which is just amazing. But it's calculated uh, by using the Ascendant, the Sun, and the Moon. Is that correct? I think that's part of Fortune, but it's something like that. Okay, right. That might be part of Fortune. Yeah. Maybe scratch that. But, yeah. It, but yeah. It, you, you can definitely see subtle features of the individual, like the first house. You can certainly see the animal. Uh, with Scorpio Vertex, you can see a little bit of a bird feature in there. And then you have Scorpio Vertex. Mm -hmm. I believe there's a little bit of eagle energy there. And just to show its strength for you, um, yours is one degree Scorpio. And you don't have anything else in Scorpio. You do have something strong in the eighth. Though. Can we bring up next chart? Next, since we're kind of flowing into that. And he does magic. And astrology and all sorts of Scorpio stuff. For sure. <laughs> yep. Otherwise, <laughs> this wouldn't be interested in it, I don't yeah. think. <laughs> so it's a point of destiny. Yeah. There you are. Oh, all right. You know? yeah. I guess we could have brought it up, up on our screen too, but you might want to use your cursor to, you know. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's. I was actually about to ask first. Like, Let's bring up Nick's chart, which Nick? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Well, we were talking about you. So. Um. Yeah. Another funny thing that we're going to be looking at both of our charts today is I think the moon is on my ascendant and on your sun and moon right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. So. All right. I think this was yeah. All right, I'm, I'm using a different site here. Um, what one do you use? Astro yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. We skip between the two, but most of our files are on the astro.com. Yeah, for me, it's the other way around. It's most of my stuff is on Astro theme. That's only because when I first started learning astrology, I was, yeah. uh, was pretty much using this site, so I just got used to it. Yeah, same. same yeah, we, then we made the switch, and mm -hmm. it was a pain at first because we had 200 people on here, and then... Oh. <laughs> Which one? Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah so, uh, what do we got? All right. So, so I guess just to start off here, we'll kind of go by this same general pattern. So let's take a look at the North Node. And yes, I do have a lot of settings turned on. Um, so you're gonna see a lot here. So first thing we're gonna look at is yeah, right here my North Node. So this is gonna be in Libra and house in the fifth house. Um, so what do we have with Libra? So what does Libra do? So Libra is a uh, you know, cooperation, partnerships, right? Um, could also be with um, with books as well, right? Because Libra, li Libros um, as well. Library. Yeah. And also, cons and here's, I guess, one, one example of it playing out is partnership. So in this case, we can say, like, I'm doing this with other people. So right here, I'm doing a show with Nick and Crystal. That's one way it's playing out. 
Um, and of course, it doesn't show it on here, but we can also assume south node all the way back in Aries. Um, and it's directly opposite. Um, well, maybe not directly, directly, but more or less opposite right with my Saturn here, mm -hmm. all the way up here in Aries. So this is so I'm going to be bringing anything things with a uh, Saturnian in nature plus uh, Aries going straight here. What else is is my north node in? My north node is also in the fifth house. So creation. So the one thing that I plan on doing is creating um, compendiums of knowledge. So you know, that that's also in books. Like that's the one thing I big thing I want to get into is creating books. I'm already compiling a huge database of knowledge uh, based around magic as well. Um, also, it's going to be including other things too, especially things with like either syncretism and, and astrology as well. Um, so there's creation, um, companions of knowledge, and what, what, and then we'll look at the midheaven right up here, all the way up in Aquarius. So Aquarius, again, there's the whole thing of, of alternative, you know, anything for most things at least. So, or it can even be astrology as well. Mm -hmm. Um, could also be so as well as re rebelling against um, systems that don't work anymore or systems that never really work to begin with if you want to look at it that way so what else is one of these things anything future futuristic knowledge truth um yeah that type of stuff yeah so now let's take a look at um what are these things playing with? So let's go back to the North Node here. So these things, so we look at the North Node. So North Node's already playing with Midheaven directly. So as we see right here, it's going to be trying the Midheaven. So right now, my, in terms of my life path, it's really easy to play that in with um, with my career. What else is it playing with? It's conjuncting Mercury. Mercury is also, a, you know, the magician as well. And of course, he's also the writer. So, like I said, I was talking about companion of knowledge. So that also involves writing, being a magician as well. That's a big thing here. What what I'm showing off here as well. Mm -hmm. um, what else is it playing with? So let's take a look back to Midheaven. I know we're jumping between here. Midheaven is also conjunct my Uranus. That's mm -hmm. also in Aquarius. So, you know, big thing with the the age of Aquarius playing on here in my chart. Um, what else is it playing with? Well, also considering where uh, Uranus is, so it's in the ninth house. Mm -hmm. So we, so it's not just you know truth, things on magic. Truth on yeah. religion. Yeah. And so truth on an astrological religion. Yeah, philosophy. Yeah. What else is it playing with as well? So this is also the sextiling with my Saturn here as well. So whatever it is I'm bringing from my north node, playing, shooting directly as well to my north node, node, which is oh. also. Okay, go, go ahead. I just, have uh, to uh, just <laughs> which is also shooting back to my midheaven, which is also conjoining with the Uranus. So there's that pattern playing out. So almost think of it as just how it's flowing. And this, and this applies to anything. So when reading your own chart, try to see if you can find the same things there too. And then, um, and then also use that as comparison to things in your own life. And, you know, this is not just life path stuff. This could literally be any aspect mm -hmm. that you want to apply it to in your life or see in your life. Yeah, you have to see how it all works together. Um, one thing that's interesting is, again, that south node isn't on your chart, but it's conjunct Saturn. So do you think that that could be like you came into this life as a master in 11th house Aries type thing? So, um, maybe. Uh, oftentimes, I try not, personally, I try not to overestimate my abilities too much. Um, but however, when it comes to, so 11th house, that'd be, so that'd be like more, more so like public relations as, um, as opposed to more closer relationships. Um, oftentimes, I felt like I was very easy for me to slip into the role of a diplomat as well. Um, mm -hmm. For Aries, uh, oftentimes, and whatever like group I, I end up joining, whether it's like a hobby related group, or whether it's like some temporary group, I always find myself 
usually it's always at the top somewhere, like whether it's directly leading it or whether like co-leading it, I always end up finding myself at the top of a hierarchy, even without, that's going to sound like, I'm, <laughs> like I'm bragging here, we're but. Here, we're here to build each other up and no. ourselves. Yeah. Important. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I, I usually end up at the top somehow, whatever group it is, I usually end up at the top. It just yeah. sounds matter of. Aries, the leader. Yeah. Yeah. The top, the top of the head, mm -hmm. and crown is the top too. Aries, Saturn actually does fantastic in Aries. Even mm -hmm. when people get Even headaches. People fall. get headaches. Yeah. Okay. It's in its yeah. prior simplicity. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I wouldn't yeah. shouldn't say fantastic, but better than I ever thought. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Some sometimes it's weird where like certain planets were like, like even. Even sometimes when you see like negative aspects, obviously it's not going to be with everything. Some aspects are just freaking terrible. But then sometimes you'll see something, oh, that looks kind of bad, but it's like silver lining. No, actually, that can be a good thing if you utilize correctly. Mm -hmm. Right? It's uh, like, um, like I, th I don't remember what specific example I remember hearing, but I remember hearing like having like an opposition between these two planets. I wish I remember what they were. Where it's just like, yeah, at first glance, it's, it looks bad, but it's like, well, no, not really, because you have these two opposing energies when they're utilized correctly, it can actually make something extremely good. Yeah, it may have some challenges associated with it. Yeah. How, however, it is, um, how are the, the results they can bring from it? So it's much like in the same sense of like striking flint and steel. Like, yeah, there's that clashing, but then in turn you get fire and then in turn you can light a campfire and now you can stay warm or like, or, you know, create light in the dark. Wow, that's yeah. a perfect analogy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that Saturn we're talking about? Just anything. Yeah. Yeah. Any a, hard seems placement to be or whatever. A, a challenging placement. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Oh, no, um, thank you. We heard, yeah, Pluto is your purpose. I think we heard once because mm -hmm. it's your passion and it's your soul. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, that's actually a good, good point because um, one thing about even like early on when I first started looking at my own chart, I've noticed like Pluto, like I was always kind of drawn to my, my Pluto placement. I never knew why. Um, after a while, after looking, it's like, well, this, this thing has a lot of positive aspects. No wonder I was so curious about it. Now, the thing is about most modern day um, astrological calculators here, like, like this one, is that for some odd reason that despite um, being out of element, it still shows up uh, with trines. Like, say, for example, here you see Pluto and it's trining my Mars and Venus. Now, unfortunately, now, well, technically it can still be, can still sort of count considering how Pluto here is on my zero degree in Sagittarius. Normally, this would be an out of element um, trine. So, meaning the trine wouldn't count, which can kind of suck because sometimes some people will look at their chart like, oh, look at all these cool trines, these cool things. But then what they may not notice is that there are you know, they're out of elements, all those trines technically don't exist, right? Or, or at best, at best, they'd be very weak and barely there that, you know, it's kind of like, instead of having like a full glass, they just may have like a one-tenth of a glass. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I agree. So, so yeah, like, yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, even... Being that it's at zero degrees, that's a, a very strong degree, too. Yeah. yeah yeah so yeah so yeah i've noticed as well like i've noticed like oh yeah like i've noticed when i read up about the trump pluto venus and mars trines i was like oh yeah i do kind of see them in my life but then later i, I discovered like oh no they're out of element they don't they're not real trines it's like oh shit they're like dang but i was like hey hang up i'm still kind of seeing them yeah i mean yeah. sure i guess they're kind of there they're orbing no it's true it's only three degree orb it's yeah. very tight Mm -hmm. yeah so i had, I had those playing along and also no so back to relation of the midheavens as well i also have pluto sex on the midheaven All right. so that also plays into the my yeah to the uh, to the occult uh aspect um playing into my career mm -hmm. and also the fact that it's on zero degree but that there's that gateway so it's bleeding still has a bit of bleed through from scorpio on the way back here but also set but also it's bleeding into heavily, well, of course, it's going to be in it's on the zero degree of Sagittarius. So Sagittarian mystic um, aspect is still played into it too. And what, what do I constantly say? Be a mystic first before you become an occultist. I mean, I was, I studied syncretism since 
uh, for hell, like 2015, 16, one of those two years. Um, so I've, so I've been a, learning how to be a mystic for years on end. And it wasn't until way, way, way later that I started becoming more of an occultist. I mean, sure, there were some things that I thought I knew about magic, some things I probably learned, but like, it's probably no, it's not really any different than what most people usually pass along. But it wasn't until way later that I properly started learning. Oh, so this is how you actually do magic. This is how you actually do it. These are the rules. This is, this is what you do. This is what you, you avoid doing at all costs. If you can all help it and yeah mm -hmm. so learning it so i understood the fire before jumping into the fire which you know may not sound the best thing to do but this is a proverbial fire <laughs> yeah uh what else what else is taken into account what about the, the oh go ahead the, oh yeah no the ascendant oh. is considered your life mm -hmm. in the first house so i mean that has to be yeah that's reading writing uh, yeah. um public speaking intellect knowledge books literature languages mm, yeah and also then that's an, oh yeah that's another thing to also consider as well like um yeah you're rising and right there in my first house i have um the moon right there too and of course if you guys remember from the previous lessons what the one of the biggest influences in life is the moon Right, not 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 just in everyday life, when it even big on magic. Well, what did I say? Even like what? Even the last episode. Keep in mind on where the moon is. The moon is the portal as to which things are are brought into. All right, think how it's the ovaries. Right, it's so again when it comes to magic, being a magician, what do we do? We're basically trying to bring things into, um, into being, and being that it's in Gemini, ruled by Mercury. Which is also Hermes, Hermes, Hermestus, and which is also conjunct my North Node too, which is also going to be trining my Midheaven as well, and of course that's also you see it's, see what I'm talking about even before things start to flow, you start seeing these these other connections too. So even if you you may start with the North Node and the Midheaven, you start playing around with the other things too as well. So and your so Moon. Your Virgo sun too, that's the Hermeticist. Yeah. And, and oh yeah, that too. And yeah. and check out check out the angle, all the angles on Mercury. That is an activated planet in your chart. Mm. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine pretty main angles. Huh. It's almost <laughs> touching everything. Super yeah. Activated. Oh yeah. yeah. Wow. Oh yeah. Huh. Oh yeah, and also, and also, another th yeah, another thing was my son trining my Jupiter as well, which is in the eighth house. Matters of of the occult, of hidden things, uh, in Capricorn, which is also so, and that being Capricorn as well, you can also refer that back to Saturn being in Aries at the top of the chart here. Uh, hang on, I was like connecting this again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, well Jupiter's the teacher and you're teaching about a cult. Yep, that too. Yeah. Uh, and uh and then And a leader, being a leader, that Capricorn leadership. Oh yeah, that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also and also by yeah, the sun being in the fifth house too. Mm. As as well. So yeah, there's that Leonian energy uh, coming in too. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and then Mercury is uh, retrograde too, which even adds more strength to it because that is when you have to do it again, rewrite your paper, rewrite your paper again, rewrite your paper again, mm. and you keep getting better at it. Mm, yeah, repetition. Yeah, but you get better. Yeah. Uh, before I always thought like mer the Mercury retrograde is like, oh man, that seems a little rough. And I've seen it many, many different ways in my own life where it played out, but it's like, you know, yeah, you know, rewriting, you know, changing what, what is bad, bad and what I don't like. Because even the negative aspects of any kind of chart, like just because there's a negative aspect doesn't necessarily mean that it's inherently a bad thing. I remember way ago, um, we were talking like, um, was yeah, I was watching one of the I forget which one it was, whether it was something on, on the Academy or whether it's like one of the podcasts, I forget which one, like Chiron came came into focus 
And uh, yeah, Nick, you, you were talking about the Chiron, the Chiron placement of someone. And I remember coming to the conclusion where it's like, where like knowing where your Chiron is and being aware of it can actually change it from being something very detrimental to suddenly being, being turned into a positive aspect. So it's not necessarily like always going to be a, like a wounded healer of a sword, but in turn can turn into the healer instead of being the wounded. I think that's how I was placing it or thinking of it at the time. Yeah, that sounds right. But, sounds yeah. right. Something like that. Yeah. If I said, if you're conscious of it, you won't let it harm you. Um, yeah. You utilize it. Like Crystal knows she's got the wounded healer in the music sign. Yeah, my throat. So I just have to yeah. keep pushing forward and rather and than just sitting there saying, saying, oh, my throat's horrible and it's just oh, random and it just not happen to me stuff. and <laughs> this, that, and the other, and not, it shouldn't be like this. It wasn't. It's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You'd be humbled by yeah. the heart. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And also having Chiron conjunct North Node as well. Mm. Uh, yeah. Reading. So, yeah. Having that North Node conjunct. I, so, yeah. That, that can also mean being a healer as well. And, and also concerning magic can be all encompassing, right? Like, it's, I guess that's another thing to, to keep to also consider having because I having Jupiter in my eighth house that's expansion like it's very generalized but it it can go anywhere coupled with the very airy airiness of Gemini and also that being in, in Libra as well so that's still expanding everywhere as well Chiron being there as well could also mean that you know because healing magic is a thing granted it can be the only the more difficult one but that's also possible using magic to heal magic is not just all about just you know, simply bringing, whether bringing more love in your life, bringing more money in your life, bringing this, bringing that, but it can also be to, you know, change things as in like, you know, changing a health condition to, to be, to, well, to heal a health condition. Like, I guess I could say it's still bringing things in. Um, yeah, it's a yeah. mystical placement, uh, star or whatever. Um, Astro. Yeah. Whatever you want to call it. <laughs> it. It rules Sagittarius and... And Virgo. Virgo and Virgo is like the Hermeticist, which is definitely crosses over into magic. And then Sagittarius is like divination and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Oh yeah, and my son of my twelfth degree, um, a Virgo as well in the second, um, the second deacon, which can be related to either depending on which system you use. I before I thought it was like kind of one and the same, but turns out they're two different systems. I forget what they were called off the top of my head, but both are related to Capricorn. Either it's like the Deacon of Capricorn or the Deacon of Saturn, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so there was, so there was that, um, yeah, that there was one with that that mastery coming in as well, because um, um, yeah, or, or even authority, um, and also i was gonna say something but. saturn has to do with the occult and magic it really seems like doesn't it yeah in many ways it is because like especially when we talk about the magic circle like that any kind of every time you you reference a circle that is you know saturn that's saturn's ring you know that's the authority and when you know when we do magic we we're going to talk about this in a later episode but the importance of the circle is the reason why we we draw a circle and we stand into it is because we are standing in the authority of saturn we're also being in the author, um, you, you know, becoming the sun as well, because the sun is in the circle. Well, even look at the symbol of the sun as well. Like, what do you see? You see a circle right in the center. You see a dot. There's, there's the eye. We're standing right in the middle um, of it all. And if you want to think of it in a more synch syncretic sense, so Jesus is the sun. I mean, Jesus is also Jupiter, but Jesus is the sun. Christ is Kronos, Kronos is Krishna, Krishna is also Christos, Christos is Christ. So, yeah. So, yeah, like, um, when, when we, yeah. Saturn and the moon, they're always opposite. Uh, um, and uh, Saturn used to be the old sun. What do you mean, Saturn? Mm. Moon is always opposite. They're, they're, they're the nature of them is opposition. Oh, right, right, right. Uh, yeah. And Saturn rules, uh, is the Lord. Of Aquarius and the Sun is the Lord of Leo. Right, and then Capricorn and Cancer, Saturn yeah. and yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, it, here's another funny story. So, so even even my own name, like 
even, well, this is even shown in my, my own name, so Nick as well, say, say Nick, right? Huh. But then, and then later on, when, um, when I picked up the name Tom Moroto, like I, I came up with that, it's, I, I pretty much um, translated it at, at the time. And this is before I even knew most of this stuff, right? Like I, I think I knew the tiniest, or I was just starting to learn astrology. So this didn't, I didn't even think about this at the time. But even then, when I chose the name Tom Rota, which meant to be like translated into like Lord of Time or, or yeah, or Time Lord or something like that, that's what I made it at the time. Mm-hmm. And it was only until way later that it suddenly hit me. It's like holy shit! Like so, I got a name that's you know related with Saturn in a sense. And then I chose a name, name that varies such in nature. It's a Lord, and with time, both Saturn. So yeah, Saturn for me has been very big influence. Like, yeah, in my life, yeah, it's like t- time rotor rotate rotation, uh, the cycles of time, Saturn, time or roto, yeah, and and your 10th mm-hmm. house is uh, which is a lot like your first house, but it, it's how the public sees you because it's up top, it's how you're mostly, mm-hmm. seen. it's like the first house. To how most people see you in in later on in life, I think, and it and yeah. and and, and it, it get it's more capitalized later on in life. It's what you're mm-hmm. known for, um, yeah. Your time, <laughs> but <laughs> your tenth house there is in a Saturn sign, so it's almost like I would I would almost call the MC or the tenth house cusp the second ascendant as well. Mm-hmm. Say the tenth house, the second ascendant is in a Saturn sign. Uh, and your name's Nick. Old Nick is the name of Saturn. Mm-hmm. My MC is also rate 28 Capricorn in a Saturn sign. Mm-hmm. So maybe that's why we're called Nick. And I have Saturn right at the top of my chart, too. And then in mm-hmm. my name, I have Sun right on the Zenith, on the MC. And Sun can also be like Christ, Crystal. Yeah. Yeah. Crystal. That's what Santos says. Yeah. <laughs> My name's uh, Nick, and I have Taurus rising, and Taurus is the neck. So my whole yeah. life, I'm saying neck, 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 neck. They're really just saying neck, neck, neck. I'm named after this body part, which is my. <laughs> I think I was, I actually remember, I was remember as as well. I'm, well, Santos also remember saying in that like um, Nick was also a very a Scorpio name. At least I think that's what he said. Scorpionic name. I don't know. Maybe I'm misremembering something. I know. He says Dan. Well, yeah, yeah, Dan. But like uh, something with the yeah, Scorpio stuff. Right, the prick, like a Scorpio pricker, prick. Mm. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> 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 Because uh, 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 hey, at the time when I when I heard this, I think I think he said that Nick was a was a Scorpio name. I was like, no, well, my name is Nick, but I'm a son Virgo. So how does that play in account? Maybe some there's that weird relation between Virgo and Scorpio. I was like, huh, no idea. Yeah. But then later, on, yeah. But then later on, when I found out more about the vertex and its influence being a Scorpio, I was like, now that makes sense. Okay, yeah, wow. Well, um, and usually when things are on one degree, it's double the strength of that sign. Maybe not double, but more, yeah, significantly it's more. strong, strong degree. Mm. It's the beginning that. of that sine wave that has the force energy of that to push it through, just like Aries is the beginning of the zodiac that has that force. Mm. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Oh, and a, another thing as well to consider. I, I think we lightly touched upon it as well, but one thing to also consider is Mars and Venus as well when it comes to like finding your life path as well. It's like your Mars, kind of like your your energy, your, your motivation, like where is it going to be? Um, as well as your, your Venus, like what do you love doing? So that's also highly important to take into account. So right. let's just refer back to, so mine are both conjunct together on, um, in Cancer as well and of course cancer is ruled by the moon and of course as we were talking about a lot in magic moon is highly important mm-hmm. so that's all 
So that plays into a part. Let's see what else. It's um, third house again. Yeah, third. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, third house, Gemini. <laughs> I, I will say, yeah, like my entire my entire chart pretty much focuses heavily on on magic as well. Yeah. Um, and what else? So it's right there, also directly opposing. Yeah, directly opposing my Neptune as well in the ninth house too. Uh, one one thing for me was. Like I remember growing up a lot and still kind of a theme for me, although not necessarily a bad thing becomes more of an adventure is even um, dealing with uh, like demonic um, uh, entities as well. So oft <laughs> oftentimes now, like especially, after, and even though this was kind of for a long while, but now with more knowledge on magic and now with Dealing with these, you know, you know, nightmares entities as well. Like mostly, I dealt with them like in nightmares. I uh, haven't really dealt with them much in the physical world, but outside from say maybe like internal ones, but that's kind of like with you know everyone has to deal with whether it's intrusive thoughts, whether it's things lingering in, in life from doubts or anxieties, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now armed with the new knowledge, now it becomes more like well, that's kind of of a bigger thing with me now, you know, sending them away, etc. Oh yeah, like I've, I think you mentioned at some point, Crystal. Like, was it like the, having Mars in the ninth house was a sign of the of like of the Exorcist, right? Yeah, yep. And I've had similar experiences too. Like, if you know, if I am aware of something being, you know, in my realm area, whoops, um, I can I can banish it. It's my thoughts and words pretty easily hmm. yeah any negative entities mm -hmm. yeah yeah i've been growing up as a kid like like i i was scared to go to bed like i would have nightmares uh left right and center like i would have any excuse to just have a night light on and and yeah i was just absolutely terrified because like almost every time it's like the most vivid experience um Mm -hmm. Yeah, most experiences, but like, it, and then you know, high time high school. Eventually, like, I started getting more into like horror genre entertainment, and then, and then once I started finding out more on the truth on on the nature of this world and the nature of us, um, that's when things started to turn around and just turn nightmares from being something to be hor horrified of suddenly an adventure. <laughs> wow. So I ended up just grabbing grabbing my my, uh, my fear by the horns and taming them. So now it's like, oh, well, yeah, if someone has a demon problem, having this opposition between Neptune retrograde in, in the ninth house against my Mars all the way in Cancer, um, having that opposition um, is what I suspect was a big cause of nightmares. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah, that, that yeah, and that to being in Capricorn also probably contributed to that. But once I started to utilize um, turning around, where it's now, now instead of me checking under the bed, <laughs> me checking under the bed for monsters, now it's the monster checks check under the bed for me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, um, another thing I noticed, have you looked into that palace in Scorpio? Mm, palace Athena. Click that. Uh, oh, here we go. That would. I remember looking into part of your magic. Oh, go ahead. It's like the goddess of wisdom. Yeah. So wisdom and magic. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, and having sun sextile both Pallas and Jupiter, that would make sense. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm. Yeah, it says. She represents intelligence oh. and uh, that's good. And global thinking talents. I've seen I've seen where it, I've seen where it says it, it's like she's like the goddess of wisdom. Should we look at mine now? Sure. Oh yeah, yeah. Let's do so. Okay. Yeah, enough about me. <laughs> oh, that was okay. good. I mean, that was, are, are you that was deep dive? I like are you good? Like, did you share everything you wanted to share? Um. Yeah, I think so. Like, I, if there is something, I was just forgetting about it, but um. 
but yeah <laughs> one one thing about me uh, uh, a lot that always ma makes me very self-conscious was like because my, my son in the fifth house as well uh, sometimes i've noticed in the past where like conversation with someone like sometimes i ended up talking a lot about myself and then always talking all, all these things about me then afterwards i'll be like oh shit i hope they don't think that i'm freaking full of myself because then it just uh, yeah. like, <laughs> it doesn't come off like that yeah the, the, it yeah, so it's always weird to talk about myself on there, and then suddenly I get into the flow of things like, oh yeah, then look at this, oh look at that, look at this, look at that, and, and it's just like, oh shit, I hope people don't think I'm just trying to brag or anything to show that, oh look how great I am. Uh, no, 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 that's not what I'm trying to do. At all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I get the same. Yeah. Too. But again, like we're so hard on ourselves, especially being Virgo. I have a Virgo sin, and you have Virgo sign. We're our own worst critics. I think. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah look. <laughs> and doesn't and it doesn't help the fact of my my own Saturnian influences as well. You know, yeah, being that very harsh uh, taskmaster as well. It's like uh, you got to get it right. It's like you don't get it right. I'll try it again. And it's yeah. it's weird because sometimes it goes in. I also have my, my Jupiterian influence as well. That's probably gives it, that softs in it a lot. So it has that, I, I want to say Santa Claus kind of combination. And that is not just strictly just Jupiter as well, because Santa Claus, you know, is both the old man who wears red, but he's also the combination of both Jupiter and Saturn. So if you're good, he gives you gifts. If you're bad, he gives you coal. Although I guess for some people in the world, given how, the nature of everything as well, maybe cold might be a good thing <laughs> but uh but yeah hmm. um another thing i noticed with crystal's uh chart is she has chiron conjunct uh sun six six degree orb um so that would be the healer um and she's a healer in in many ways I'm selling health supplements to heal and healing music. Healing, and, but but that's my point. Is it's in Taurus, the music sign, healing music. So mm. yeah, that's another thing. Mm. Okay. We should... Oh yeah. Wrote. Uh... Oh yeah, oh, yeah. We mentioned flute as well. This is Gemini as well, and Gemini on the hyper on, on the Taurus field is the hyperbola, and of course it's air. I mean, what goes through the flute? Air. Yeah. yeah. I think I think I wanted to bring that up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, that's funny how that works out. I hadn't. I had maybe thought about that, but just as a passing thought. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> no problem. Hmm. Yeah, I hope this. That's a lot of tabs. <laughs> I, uh, I know that's my Virgo. What's that? A lot of tabs. <laughs> but each one has a very specific purpose. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, okay, here's next chart. Oh, no, that, that's loaded, so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's, let's start off with, of course, the North Node. Where are you at? There you are. All the way up in Capricorn. Mm -hmm. So that's going to, so Capricorn, right in the ninth, in the ninth house. I mean, that's already syncretism. That's already astrology. That's, uh, astrotheology. Uh, astrotheology. Uh, yeah. Astrotheology. And that's, and then your MC is, Oh, and that's that's almost practically conjunct. Well, not conjunct. It's close. Yeah, twenty. Yeah, thirty degrees north node, fourteen degrees. No, twenty-eight degrees. MC. So again, not may not necessarily conjunct, but still it's the same house. Mm -hmm. Um. And what else is there in your MC? Connected to your MC. Oh, first, hang on. Let's see what the north node is playing with. So the north node is playing with the sun. At least it looks like it is. Yeah, well, it's running like by off of uh, and, uh, Uranus, but yeah, well, it is. But it's, it's eleven. It's eleven degrees and thirteen degrees. So 
That's only a mm. sextile. Sun mm. and Mars, because Mars is at 13 degrees. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, and it's just running the lines off of one uh, Uranus, which is one degree away. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. And of course, yeah. And with Uranus as well, with the alternative medicines as well, you got cell salt, you got electromagnetic healing, healing, you got life wave, you, uh, you got urine therapy. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, meth protocols. I mean, so. the electromagnetic foot pad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that thing too. How did you determine that? Uranus. Uh, Uranus. North node can jump. Yeah. Uranus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. So sextiling that with your sun and your um, your uh, moon and your Mars as well. So that's all going to be your your conscious effort, your subconscious effort. Uh, what you bring in, as well as even your your motivation, your your will, your energy. It's well dedicated in that. And of course, that Mars being in, in Scorpio, that's already going to be you know very very dense. I mean, it... It, it, it's already evident that you're um, so all the way back in cancer, so watery, very soothing. Um, all right, so yeah, so the south node, so what you're bringing in as well. So I mean, it may be in cancer in the, in the third house, so, so already with the communication. Um, what else was cancer? cancer? Cancer can also be nurturing as well because of the moon. And, so that coupled with, and of course, nurturing when it comes to healing. I mean, of course, you want to be nurturing. Um, so that will be trying in your moon and your sun. So that's already a huge focus as, as well. Um, and then your midheaven, Capricorn. And then there's Saturn in the mix, too, up there. Oh, yeah, Saturn is there, too. Mm -hmm. so also made, made... similar mm -hmm. energy to yours even though your saturn is like not conjunct but it's still connected to it mm. yeah i also, also see more on um on the name nick that like all of us here right here have a, a, some kind of saturnian influence well you have crystals cr crystal mm -hmm. and then you got the um the other two yeah <laughs> mix here as well yep uh, so that's gonna jump in the MC. So Saturn can also be, you know, regiment as well, very rigid. So when it comes to healing protocol, I mean, what's the most important thing? Making sure you follow the protocol because it's not just healing. Oh, slap this on just once, and that's it. You don't drink one gulp of urine, and, and that's it. You don't just, you know, do push-ups once, and that's it. You don't fast just once, and that's it. You gotta, you gotta keep disciplined about it. Yeah, he's he is the most regimented person I know. <laughs> when it comes to health protocols especially i really want to like fix that gut flora <laughs> and just be at ease yeah, yeah. All the six house oh speaking of gut messing with him oh, <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah shit, shit that's right six i don't know how i missed that mm -hmm. oh plus couple with jupiter fourth house that's trining north node I, i'm i don't know how i didn't miss that and that's all sextiling your south node so you're teaching as, you know, medical astrology as well as health protocols as, w as well. And well, that in itself was also sex telling your sun, your moon, your vertex is in Libra as well. 23 degrees, it looks like. Yeah, 23 degrees. Libra. So there's that, in a sense, that partnership as well playing in. Both of you are working together to, to bring about these, um, you know, these, whether what you want to call it new or call it old, depending on your perspective on it, mm -hmm. um, these these health modalities in, in, into effect, as well as just as, you know truth in general. Uh, so there's that partnerships as well. There's books you you guys have that that medical astrology book you released a little while back. Yep, and we plan to do more. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm hmm. So there's a, and that's also in the sixth house, so health related things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, his whole. Uh, where's your Chiron? Chiron's all the. It's mm. all health, 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 health. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, and, and Venus being being in Virgo as well. So that's your you know, what you love doing. Yeah. So service. Um, 
And then teach. Uh, well, no, very good. Uh, teaching. What else is? Yeah. yeah. Um, one thing that going back to like life purpose, uh, Nick has the Taurus ascendant, and um, when he's up, he's played music like on and off his whole life, and then when we got together, it kind of became more of a a focus. Because her son is 24 and her MC is 24. Yeah, right on his ascendant. And she puts Venus in my first house, first house so she activates that music mm -hmm. sector. Mm -hmm. mm, oh, yeah. That's another thing, too. Like, you, like <laughs> when you meet particular people, uh, your purpose can be activated. Part of your purpose. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, absolutely. And I, and especially more, especially more so like, both in relation to my chart and I guess even next chart here because it's vertex. Yeah. So the vertex being in, in Libra, which is also partnerships as well, that can also be a, a very big activation point um, for anyone that could have that, that kind of placement. Uh, let's see what's in the seventh house. Seventh house is Mercury. That's also Sagittarius. Um, that is also uh, Libra as well. So that also has a passive influence, if not a big influence, um, on that partnership aspect. Mm -hmm. And so that so yeah that activation from Taurus all the Libra partnerships as well, Rick, ricocheting back to Mercury Sagittarius over there. So mysticism, so uh, philosophy as well, um, Jupiterian influences too. Uh, I guess yeah if you want you want to add in syncretism too if you want to go that far. Um, you know, expansion as well. So, I mean, yeah, the, the list goes on. Just fun. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, I, I okay. go. Oh, okay. Um, no, go, 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 go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just think it's really interesting that the moon is right on my ascension today, and we're reading our charts. It's like, it's the luminary. It's illuminating our chart, and the moon tends to magnify um yeah depending waxing waning full more yeah stuff. it's actually waxing yeah so it's very magnet yeah yeah um yeah and so then, and then the sun the other luminary is right on my uh 10th house oh. Oh. oh look at that so yeah i have a feeling astrology might have a, some kind of influence it's kind of a theory but i think it's there <laughs> <laughs> I think there's something to do. I'm not sure yet. <laughs> I don't blame them though. They didn't learn to be cool. Like this would be the coolest class for everyone. Right. The girls will go crazy. And right. it would be like Crystal. She'd have three notebooks full of every potential partner, 14.65 degrees. Hey, Venus. <laughs> and then Joey has this and uh Marcus has this. <laughs> Yeah. It'd be like I have like hockey team and like uh football playoffs, but like the Mars the Mars people are gonna be on defense. Donnie's got Mars and Junk Sun, he's gonna be on defense and... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> oh god, yeah, like I yeah, man, like I really wish I learned this stuff. I, like even in school school doesn't help the fact that my Mercury was squaring off my Jupiter and the fact that I have moon and rising in Gemini. Uh yeah, I, I was Fucking, my attention span goes everywhere. If it doesn't have my interest, it's gone in the next five seconds. Or I'll just zone out completely. Like, I remember just going through class, just like daydreaming. I think this is where I got, I got the, like, I learned, the, or passively learned the ability to put myself into a trance where, like, I would just, like, put in earbuds and, like, going through a class, or even when we're told to, put, to do an assignment, I would just sit there and just gaze and just completely trail off to, to whatever fantasy land that I was thinking of at the time. Or literally anything that, that caught my interest, mm -hmm. and if it and only in like times where like I actually wanted to learn something because it was some, actually something useful that it ever keep my attention, right? I know, and, and like all these occult students and syncretists they have the same thing. I was like crazy lost in school. Yeah, yeah. So like just not paying attention, missing out on key important details not doing assignments because you're sitting there gazing and just like okay and then the teacher will come along is like it's been like 30 minutes you haven't have any that i was like oh fuck uh, yeah so I'm, I'm still thinking yeah um okay i'm, I'm writing see okay 
<laughs> and then, yeah. <laughs> and then anything comes with anything with like, and then so you fast forward to things to places where like you're actually learning. So uh, the signature mechanic, for example, yeah, that was I was hyper fixated on that because that was stuff that was actually useful and actually interested in. And you know, same thing with like anything else, whether it's other things online where like with videos with running to astrology or astrotheology, et cetera, et cetera. I was like, yeah, I was hyper focused on that. Like, um, wasn't. The only, the only way, I mean, the only way that I would get distracted is if, like, if there's something that caught my eye and I get sidetracked in there um, and then just go down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. Is that the only way that I would, can get this distracted on that end? But, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Like, um, stuff like this in school, mm -hmm. and we would be all over. Mm -hmm. I think everyone would. I was always yeah. that that perfect student. I think it was my Virgo rising. If you have South Node in the third house, your early education is diminished. Mm. I have, but you didn't. But I mean, yours maybe not been diminished. You just said didn't have great focus. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't read anything. I couldn't. I wasn't present the whole time. Yeah, uh, for me, I think it was my Mercury squaring off my Jupiter. Um, both. You know, and yeah, considering Berkeley was retrograde for me, uh, that's where my my attention span was kind of really fucky, and that's not even counting. Well, I mean, okay, that's also con in conjunction with the Moon and rising in Gemini, that Mercurial, airy, Mercurial or not Mercurial. Well, yeah, yeah okay, yes, Jer God damn it! You Mercury with you, Well, I, I was going to say Mercury, but then I started saying Germany. I was like, what the fuck does Germany come from? <laughs> Huh. So Gemini, that's where it happened because I was Gemini, Mercury, then there's Germany. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, <laughs> Gemini going all over the damn place doesn't help the fact that Mercury's retrograde. It's also in um, Libra, so that's yep. yeah, yeah, yeah. Because her Mercury is strengthened by the cardinal tenth house, and, and it's, it's in Gemini. Mm. You can jump Venus. Mm -hmm. And and Mercury would be, would be mm. your lower early on mundane education. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is retrograde, so maybe that's what disrupted your early education. And yours is in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I was just yeah. dreaming about philosophy the whole time. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, for me it was actually stories. Like just, I'll just make up stories in my head, and Libra, uh, library, and yeah, and then oh, and philosophy will also get included in there too because it's it was squaring up with Jupiter, so it had that Jupiterian influence. Yeah. So mine was actually similar in many respects. Mm -hmm. ah. and crystal oh. Mercury in the tenth, so you were like propped up at the high tier. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. I, I always liked being in the front row because uh -huh. then I wasn't distracted. <laughs> and I, if I was any not in the front row, you know, there's all the distractions. Mm. I think we're onto something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. For me, it was I was always at the back, and now unless I was forced to sit at the front, because that's like yeah, forced to pay attention, and the teacher can can look at me and he's like, hey, Nick, you you paying attention? I was like, oh, uh, yes, sir, I'm, I'm paying attention. Yeah, totally. Yeah, okay. What are we talking about? Yeah, exactly. Oh, shit. Right. Okay, fine. <laughs> yeah, I stuck away from the first row too because you'd notice I'd be like not ever looking at this or something. <laughs> I put my head down. A lot. Yeah. I, I couldn't. I yeah. Couldn't not figure out what you're saying. I just cannot. I tried everything. I said, okay, on the next sentence, I'm going to get what they're saying. And then, I, okay, no, no. And, and then eventually I'd be like, fatigued from trying to figure out what they're saying because it sounded like they were speaking backwards and then i just put my head down and that was the problem i remember it was like when i put my head down like it's a big deal i was just gonna say I was, I was gonna, life purpose right that's actually what i was gonna say too so we're all on the same wave wave like there <laughs> so we cover so we covered the mc so that's in capricorn um so capricorn yeah so you know whether it's you know business related as well but it also can also be related to that can also be in con um oh yeah that's another th another thing to i think we covered this already right the rulership of the planets of whatever those placed on as well so 
Um, oh, yeah, so like Saturn. So Saturn there. So um, where's Saturn here? Right? Uh, Saturn was all the way. Oh, <clears throat> yeah, it goes, it's right there. If I open my eyes, it's right there. <laughs> right there in Aquarius. Uh, Aquarius, of course, alternative. It's, it's the rebel. It's new technologies or old, depending on how you look at it. Um, astrology as well. Medical astrology, alternative healing, from neuropathy to electromagnetic healing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, as well. And then we... We also wanted to see and that's also can even though it's it's out of element it's still pretty close enough to have some kind of influence at least so maybe some kind of bleed through influence well regardless or not whether it's through the conjunction or the or through rulership the mc is definitely has a, a kind of relation to to Saturn. well no it still would because yeah. it's still in the 10th house so it doesn't so yeah conjunction or no conjunction there's still that influence mm -hmm. and then we look back to say the vertex here um well what else is the vertex playing with vertex was uh it's in libra so what are we looking at so oh yeah exaltation saturn exaltation how, how do I, I forget that saturn exaltation in libra yeah yeah and what else venus healing mm -hmm. in virgo i mean yeah so there's that the, the love there's that healing. yeah so love of healing mm -hmm. um sure of healing <laughs> And yeah, teaching about healing with Jupiter. Um, Jupiter is also trining North Node, with so that path in life. Um, and that North Node also seems yeah, it's conjunct with uh, Uranus and Neptune, really. And Neptune, yes. And Neptune is syncretism. Uranus is astrology. Ninth house is religion, so astrotheology, syncretism, and the ninth house is travels and we've traveled a long distance down to mexico to stay here with santos and i don't know i guess that's part of it mm -hmm. yeah and also sextiling the sun moon and mars as well so all that so those are interlinked in a chain kind of more like and like and of course the this the conscious mind is the subconscious mind and as well as the energy so i mean you can already tell that he's really focused and big on healing um and in the it's all in the sixth house too yeah and, yeah and the fact that it's in scorpio so the more hidden i mean these things have been hidden these things are you know these are more yeah and it, well not not strictly necessarily occult no but they're still hidden things um in many ways, they can actually seem very extreme. Like, I'm, I know, like, in this day and age, even though way back when, the things like, say, uropathy as well um, was, like, the norm, right? But nowadays, it's like, and it's, un, I mean, you know, understandable why it's the case, you know, for, at least for most people. But, like, but once you know the truth of uh, uropathy, then it's like, well, you can't really talk bad about it anymore because now that you know. But in many cases, it's, it seems very extreme. I mean, so it's very intense of... of you know, using your own urine. And that's just one example too, because you also have the whole thing of using these alternative technologies, where it's like whether it's LifeWave, iTerahertz, uh, the the footpad thing. It's like, well, you have all these amazing in um, these different healing things that apparently are supposed to do these all these amazing or have all these amazing capabilities to heal. Meanwhile, you have mainstream medicine that's you know supposedly better funded, more trained, but but then it's, but it, they can, they can treat, they can throw things under the rug and hide symptoms, but they can't actually cure it. Not that they want to, because, you know, the old saying goes, a cus customer heals, a customer loss. So, you know, okay, all right. But then, of course, many people don't, don't necessarily have that mindset um, at the forefront. Um, they think they, they have the good intentions, um, or at least as the industry as a whole, I'm not talking about, you know, individual doctors who are, you know, get, get fooled into doing it. Um, but even still, there's that there's that extreme aspect, that intense aspect of suddenly like, oh, oh, yeah, you have that that issue that your doctor couldn't heal you for the past 10 years. I can heal that in like in a, in a month. And lo and behold, you do. Is I mean, that's pretty intense. Just like imagine dealing with that problem and suddenly it just gone. It's like, holy shit. Now it's just like I feel like a kid again. Like I was so used to I thought it was going to be my whole life. And now it's like that's powerful. I mean, Scorpio is power. Wow, there's a lot of power in Scorpio. Oftentimes, it's, yeah, it is very hidden. I can go on about Scorpio um, all day long.
Yeah, and it's the but sign I, of regeneration, uh, the eight, oh. eight sign. So the sign, the infinity symbol is eight. And mm. to do with regeneration, immortality, death, rebirth. Your cells die, they rebirth. Um, that, and then the moon is extreme, and the moon's there. <laughs> and then, like Vertex <laughs> said in Libra, Libra is the sign of urine therapy because it's the kidneys. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh yeah, your your moon and sun are also conjunct too. So there you have a uh, yeah, you got a new moon there. So that probably plays a part in stuff, at least when it comes to hidden things or even well, because it's behind the sun, it'd be a waning new moon. Yep. But so yeah, you know, in many ways you can view it as say vanishing or putting away like the the mainstream um modalities that don't help at all or help very very little maybe once in a blue moon it might help someone with may or may not maybe with some caveats there here and there hmm. but you're you can and this can be viewed as you know banishing that ignorance of the hidden things and bring the bringing them to light. Yeah. Um, and then waning new moon is the best time to detox. Mm -hmm. That's all I do. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, that's true. And yeah, I, and also that yeah, when it, uh, remember remember in the previous episode we talked about the moon waning when the moon is decreasing, getting rid of things, you're banishing, detoxing. I mean, what are you doing? You're getting rid of toxins. So yeah, you're banishing. And of course, waxing is for bringing things in, and and no, and knowing what, and as we talked about in the law of polarity, knowing what how to push and how to pull is going to be very vital, um, in being a magician as well, um, because you know some people may be may generally be better at pulling, other people may be generally generally better at pushing, and you know, or you can have competencies in both. Uh, Mine's all about uh, banishing and Pluto. And Scorpio is destroying and breaking down. And uh, I got all these placements in Scorpio, and you notice she has everything exactly opposite in Taurus. And I was born on a waning new moon, and she was born on a, on a waxing full moon. <laughs> so, oh, I'm seeing a beautiful pattern here because if we have this, we have this partnership right here, right? Both of these working together. So, like we talked about before, we have white magic, we have black magic, we have Pulling, we got pushing, bringing things in, pushing things out. So that over there is banishing, the right? Yep. And of course, you got you got crystal over there, pulling things in. So and remember, the universe works off of pressure mediation. So you have that same pattern playing here, as above, so below, within, so without. Out. Um. Ah, oh, crap! Come on, where was it? Well, I was. You got the same pattern uh, playing out right, right there in this in this beautiful relationship. All right, like whatever is like, hey, let's talk about it. What, what, what do we want? All right, the universe works with pressure mediation. When you decrease in one, you increase on another. When you increase in one, you decrease in another. So if I can decrease things, you can increase things. Okay, so let's say, uh, let's try to bring in healing. What's what's the opposite of health? Uh, well, bad stuff, parasites, toxins, et cetera, et cetera. Let's get rid of the bad stuff, right? So Nick will go go and push things in ways. Okay, I pushed all the things out. Now we got an empty room. Uh, uh, Crystal, all right, you come along now. Like, okay, I'll bring in this. All first, the good stuff. First, the builder. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, so that's oh yeah, yeah, same. Like think of it even the construction. So like you got this old building, it's falling apart. I'm pretty sure there's a safety violation here and there. I mean, just going in there, you're you're gambling with your life. All right, so how do we get? So what do we do? It's like, well, this building is bit, bulldoze it all over. Mm-hmm. Bulldoze it. You knock it down. Clear out all all the old components. Maybe salvage whatever you can, but you know, generally you you want to. Get rid of the of the old stuff. Okay, all the stuff is gone. We got the bulldozer. Okay, so now Crystal will bring in with the supply truck of all the new construction materials. All right, now let's start putting all the new bricks down. Let's start laying the foundation. Start digging the the um, the pits or the the basement. What whatever kind of building you're making. Either way, you same pattern played out right there. That's how it works too. It is how exactly how it's exactly how it's always been. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always trying to throw away stuff. Get rid of it. Start fresh. <laughs> <laughs>
And then yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then I'm the projector and she's the manifester, manifesting generator. And it's apparently a really, <clears throat> really good team because I give her the ideas and she builds them. She manifests and generates them. Oh, I ju that just reminded me. Remember as well, even with law of gender, as well as the, uh, the relationship between the conscious mind and the subconscious mind, right? Um, that same thing played out right there. So you, you, you many ways you can say like, oh, hey, Nick is uh, the one that brings the ideas. Like, hey, I got this idea. Yeah, let's pass it along to Crystal. And Crystal was like, oh, cool. Yeah, that seems like a pretty good idea. Let's, let's do it. Same thing happens in even in magic, the, you know, what, what, why we do ritual as we, uh, as we spoken before. The whole point of doing ritual, having all these correspondences, these colored candles, robes, whatever, whatever it is you're doing is to give the instruction to this and communicate with the subconscious mind, which is the, the emotion, is the feminine aspects, the right brain, whereas the left brain is the masculine aspect, the logical, the, the conscious, the one that, you know, makes that this you know, kind of makes that um, decision. And the subconscious will then afterwards carry out the, you know, the whatever it was. And there you go, you bring heaven by bringing those two together. Mm -hmm. hmm. As above, so below, is within, so without. <laughs> every time, does, it, does not matter where it's, it plays out every single time. And it's absolutely beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, and then another thing we're on opposite too is I was born on Tuesday, a Mars day. Oh, yeah. Which is <laughs> the Friday, the Venus day. Mars and Venus are opposite boys and girls. Um, <laughs> I have my moon and sun conjunct Mars in a Mars sign. Of course, I'm born on Tuesday. And she's got her moon in a Venus sign. Hey, there it is right there. I didn't even know what I just did. What happened? What did I switch for? <laughs> Magic, magnetism by Scorpio oh Magnetic Baby just oh! somehow <laughs> it just glitched. <laughs> that's both mine again. Okay. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, with the no, just as a quick side side note here as well. So to backtrack uh, to you know, my own chart, I was born on a Wednesday, Mercury. Oh, yeah. But back to back to this. Wow. <laughs> yeah, in Sun Post, Leo Rising was born on a Sunday. Oh, ain't that funny? <laughs> huh? Oh man. Oh, for the people that are wondering the day, the the order of the week, uh, we have a video on our channel too. It's called Days of the Week. Santos Bernard, you could just watch that. One thing we didn't touch on in yeah. the chart yet regarding life purposes is Chiron. Have we? I don't remember talking about that. I was just actually thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are we sure we want to see if it's... Hopefully our internet's good. We'll see. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, okay. it's good enough. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, but what I was gonna say earlier, like once again, this only just proves. I mean, we can probably there's probably loads of other things we can already look at. But for any you know doubting Thomases out there that think that oh it's just a spiritual new age belief system, or you know something to that effect, well then start looking at these things right. Start before you start knocking down knocking down on astrology, think it's just some hippy dippy belief thing belief system that maybe. Yeah, I guess teenage girls do in high school just to, uh, for dating or whatever, like try actually understanding it first, then you'll see how things start to change because it's not a belief system because you, your belief is not required for astrology. It's much like a language. You just need to know how to read it. Yeah. At first it's going to look very complicated. I'm sure anyone can recall their first time looking at their natal chart. I remember my, I'm looking at the whole chart and be like, what the hell is all this? What is this wheel? What are all these symbols? What, what are all these lines going across? Yeah, it's going to look very complicated. But once you learn how to read it, then you'll start to see like, holy shit, there's actually something to it. Now, of course, there's more to it. Like, oh, hey, how, what is the day? Well, I mean, they have, how can that influence, you know, how my life, what my life is or who I am? It's like, well, sure. I mean, the day can, but there's more to it than that. It's not just your sun sign, as most people get usually get stuck on. There's also your moon, there's also your rising, there's also your planets, you got your aspects, you got the houses. Right, and all things in, in there in between as well. You also got the Chiron, you got the North Node, you got the Midheaven. 
and know how all those things play together. Of course, there's other things that involve too, like you can go into numerology as well. As we were talking about the days, so you had Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Hey, um, um, what else? Even the birth time too. We're born during the day. We're born during the night, right? Which actually goes goes in line with you know the houses as well and the rising. Um, and of, and of course, even if, if if that doesn't kill you, okay, well, don't think of it as some belief system. It's like, oh, okay, that seems a little weird. It's also the science of electromagnetism. It's there is a tangible way to look at this. We may not necessarily look at it like that on conventionally today. Whether it's because could be well, mostly because like we just don't have access to that specific technology to read. That's why they're able to read the the electromagnetic influences, but we don't necessarily need to. We just, just having the, the natal chart calculator is already enough, right? Now, I'm sure if we want to go deeper, yeah, sure. I'm sure we, someone could out there, if it hasn't already been developed, or probably has somewhere, maybe, whether it's buried or whether it's hidden or not been released, who knows? Someone can invent a, a machine that can actually read the electromagnetic frequencies that are, we're being pelted with on a constant basis. Like, no, again, this is close, it goes back astrology does not require your belief to work. It does. It works constantly under the effect. Think of it like this as well. You notice how, you know how when people go underground for an extended period of time, they start going a little bit crazy. Why is that? Well, it could be, well, it's for a number of reasons. I mean, we even, like, it's because we're not, when we're, because when we're on the surface, we're constantly under the influence. We're constantly, we're, we're used to that. But when we go underground, we get insulated from that. I mean, sure, there's also things like, say, like the sun, for example. Like we know already, it's even conventionally in mainstream, we know the sun gives us, you know, um, different things. Like whether it's you know vitamin D, we we also yeah. from the from the UV. Um, that that already That's shows right. like that. Yeah, we, we still, yeah, suntan. Like people, like it's everyone knows knows it. So why the heck can the can't the others influence us? Sure, it may not always necessarily be obvious. Right? I mean, try getting a sunburn from Mercury. I don't know if you can. Maybe if you're very, very close to it, hugging it against it. It's like, hi, Mercury. Oh, well, yeah, it's getting a little bit warm here. Um, maybe Mars. I don't know if, if you get close, if you somehow manage to get yourself close enough to the, into the firmament to, to get to Mars. Maybe you might feel something. I don't freaking know. I Definitely the sun. Are, yeah. I don't think those are hot. I think, I think there's two depths of luminaries, the sun and the moon, and the sun's the hot. Positive masculine one, and the moon's the mm. native cold magnetic cool. Yeah, yeah. moonlight makes you colder. That's yeah. It's, oh yeah. Yeah, it's warmer in the sh moonlight shadow than it is in the moonlight. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's another funny thing. How is it that a big rock can suddenly make things colder? Maybe because it's not a rock. Huh, yeah. Who would have thought? Yeah, <laughs> the sunlight's reflecting off of it. Uh huh. <laughs> oh yeah, that's. A Funny, funny luminaries, lumens, do loose. loose. Mm. Hmm. 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 That's funny. Hmm. I remember um way way back when you're doing the five minute medical astrology and you first saw me, you, you uh you thought I was like, oh yeah, I'm sensing Libra, but you were still trying to pull up my chart. I was like, at first I was like, how are you getting Libra from me? I don't. And at the time, I I, I didn't it didn't occur to me that I had Mercury and North Node in Libra. Um, so it only made sense after the fact. It was like, huh? I don't know how you got Libra from me, but okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We got off track once again because the chart is just finally loaded. We got Cap uh, uh, Chiron and Leo. He's got some aspects to it. Right. So that would be my, that would be my, uh, you know, one of my key charts because all my planets are exchanging en energies with Chiron. Mm -hmm. My sun, moon, Mars, Pluto, Mercury, Uranus, North Node, Neptune and Saturn. They're all exchanging. They're all having a conversation with uh, Chiron and Leo. Mm -hmm. mm. But, well, you mentioned Mercury, right? Because you have a Mer uh, Chiron, yeah, tr Chiron trining Mercury too. Yeah. So there's that communication aspect when it comes to um, sharing health modalities as well and um, methods of healing and, and even cu couple it with astrology too. And Mercury's also, yeah. And Mercury's on uh, the fixed star um, that represents astrology. So oh, uh, speaking about astrological healing, yeah. So yeah, but still, right there, uh, that's yeah, another thing to keep in mind. Mind with that too. You got to look at the subtler, 
sub yeah the more su subtle influences too so what rulership um as well um because it's not it may seem complicated at first especially overwhelming um especially to newcomers as well we're like oh i gotta gotta research this gotta research that gotta know all this information just to find out well i guess that's another key thing why astrology is accurate because we're, we all have unique so how can we possibly be all unique if it was so simple, because then we would have people who all do literally the exact same life that may be few and far between. But of course, we all have our own unique paths in life, right? That's why, like, stopping at sun sign astrology is ludicrous. Why it doesn't, why some people will look at it and be like, oh, that doesn't seem like me. Like, oh, I'm, I'm not a, I'm a Capricorn, but it's, uh, it's not sound like me like at all. Or I'm a, I'm a Pisces and it doesn't sound like me at all, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but then you take into account to these these subtler paths in too. It's like, oh, now it makes sense. Now I'm seeing how that plays into account. Oh, yeah. the reason why I'm not like that is because I have this influencing. So if, you know, you take you take it one step at a time, and learning this, and eventually you'll start. Oh, now it all makes sense. Now it's all coming together. Yeah, and even twins, why they're not exactly identical, is because uh, the Egyptians say it the real the real details and uh information to your life path lies within the um minutes and seconds and these are just the minutes rounded up so 9 23 that goes to 59 like on a clock but this is really uh you can cut our internet will not yeah. provide but uh if you click here additional tables you can get on all the cusps, because if a person's born even 10 seconds later, all the cusps are moving and all the planets are moving slightly. The, the Not the degrees, but the minutes and the seconds will change a lot. So you can get a full reading from the minutes and seconds that the planets are. <laughs> and these are just showing the minutes here. There's, there's, there's 59 minutes in a degree and 59 seconds in a minute. So just one of those minutes there are broken down by 59 parts. Mm -hmm. An immense amount of detail. In yeah. And also that's not even counting the fact, depending on how far our twins are born, right? You can even have different risings too. And of course the rising also goes along with the houses. So you could have like uh, a twin that has fourth degree or not fourth, fourth house son, but the next one could have, a, I don't know, fifth house, or would it be fifth house or third house? I need to double check on that. Well, oh, yikes. Yeah. But they'll, they'll have a completely different house. And of course, with that in mind, that whole thing also shifts too. So every other planet, while they may be in similar places, right? Not This is not, again, not even counting what Nick just talked about when it comes to the minutes and the seconds, which these things will change too. But it's even the houses as to which these planets are in will also change. Like having Jupiter in your eighth house is going to be very different than having Jupiter in your fourth house or in your 10th house, right? They, they, there might be some similar theme, maybe because of the signs of the, the that they're in. Um, but having different houses, that's still a very big influence. Is why it's important to have your birth time and, and down to the minute too, not just like general. Oh, I was born at three o'clock. Okay, were you born exactly at three o'clock? Were you born at like at three thirty? Were you born at three fifteen, three seventeen, three forty five, three forty six? Like what time? Because that's going to be a big deal because that can even determine whether you're say a, a cancer rising or a leo rising or it's you know libra rising or scorpio rising right that will that will change the whole thing yeah. and of course risings as most astrologers know very big influence at first house it's a very big deal mm, incredibly for her hers is one degree virgo rising she's nice mm. perfect neat. neat neat nails neat hair worked as a waiter which is the virgo sign uh <laughs> Uh, oh, every... waitress. Oh, waitress. <laughs> yeah. See, incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She's, she's, and she, yep. Yep. Okay. And she's not a, uh, she's not a Leo rising at all. She doesn't look like, she looks like a Virgo rising. And if she was born six minutes earlier, she would look different. She would act different. She would be, she could, her, her hair would be all in the, in, in the in the camera, she'd be constantly moving it and be like this fantastic <laughs> hair, and she'd be she'd be she'd be a completely different person if she was born yeah. maybe even oh. more minutes earlier. 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's amazing how that yeah that tiny detail, that tiny little switchboard can can completely change. It's it's like for anyone who might be thinking of say like even train tracks, right? We're like yeah, you have all these train tracks all going uh, going in different places, but you have these clusters, right? You, you know, have these stations. They're all yeah lined up perfectly, but all you have all these switches and levers that change direction. If one switch is flipped, it could make a train go from left to something that's going right in the complete opposite direction. And astrology works much in the same fashion. Have one thing plugged in the right and the really different place completely makes that huge difference. Even in, like computers, oh, even in computers where it's just all ones and zeros, having like a zero be a one in just one random part of the line of code completely changes the whole code. Like, of course, this will can vary in degree. Sometimes it would be like oh, like a small difference. Others would be like it can be from working to not working or doing one thing to doing something completely different. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, and I've well, even seen people with 0, 0 0.0 degrees a sign, and they're definitely that sign, and they're not the sign before. Mm -hmm. So it's just yeah. <laughs> incredibly right when it switches from 50 to 29.59 Virgo to yeah. 0 0.01. As soon as it clicks to 0 0.01, they're a different person. <laughs> And, and, how do they, and how do they look like? They look like the sign they are when they're born, but they don't just take on that shape the second they take their breath and assume their birth chart. So somehow they know, somehow the uterus knows to formulate for the time when they're born. Mm. It's an amazing yeah. place. Where... Yeah, but this has been so good. Thank you. We'll, we'll dive into astrology even more. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, definitely. Like, there's no way this is the last one. Yeah, yeah sure. Well, we, are, we probably are going to go back into magic too. But of course, astrology is the mother of all sciences. So yeah, naturally, we're going to go back to this, right? Like, yeah. it's magic is not just just correspondences and everything and just doing stuff. But we we got to know stuff too, right? Like the life path. Like that's going to be vitally important, especially even as a magician, right? Because knowing where you're going to take your life, what maybe what kind of magic should you focus on? That will be big, All right? That will definitely influence it because it's not just about getting what you desire. Sometimes it's getting what you need. You know, sometimes you need you to use magic to fix an issue, like an internal issue. And that's actually what's encouraged to do with magic is to, there are like two different types of magicians. There are those who want power over others, generally speaking, and there are those who want power over themselves. But of course, in order to get that power, you need to have the knowledge. And what's the first thing you should do is know thyself. So knowing this, this vital science is going to be important. So yeah, okay. it's not always about doing stuff, but sometimes just knowing stuff. So be a mystic first. Perfect. Thank you so much for being here and thank you all for listening. We will see you next time. Many blessings. Thanks. Bye.